think it all happens in Silicon Valley. You thought a wrong. <laughs> So is a travel search engine for spontaneous and adventurous travellers and it's designed to help people find trips who haven't yet decided where they want to go and when they want to go there. So basically it's, it's just to be a more um, engaging shopping experience for finding flights rather than choosing an airport, choosing a date, we'll show you where you can go, when's the best time to go, a bit about the place, all of your best options and why you should go there. Uh, so we met nearly over 11 years ago. Now. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we worked together for a company called Aussie Mail Internet, which back then was like the, one of the biggest ISPs in Australia. Um, we were just junior tech support guys. You know, that was our way of getting into the whole this exciting internet industry that was just taking off. Um, and yeah, we just, I don't know, we, we just started chatting and we realised we were both kind of entrepreneurial, we had ideas, stupid ideas mostly. <laughs> um, the, I think the, the way we really kind of, like the, the first big conversation I remember having with Fen was when he was telling me how you could use Big Pond Cable to like run web servers on. Um, in those days, it was like quite costly to, mm -hmm. to buy web hosting and we, we both wanted to do, we were doing our own web development and, um, and Fen had this ingenious way of like hooking up a web server to a big pond cable service so you could like save all that money. And so for a long time, I was actually running professional websites on, on a big pond cable connection thanks to Fen's advice. <laughs> that, that might have fallen under the bracket of stupid ideas possibly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, from there we, I know we actually got, well I guess we discovered that the, uh, the Big Pond Cable based hosting wasn't such a, uh, a robust solution after all. And we actually started building uh, a more serious web hosting company that led on to a, a company selling services to the telecommunications and ISP industry. So yeah, at that stage we were sort of developing various sort of software and hardware solutions for the sort of still growing internet service provider sector um, which we sort of grew to a reasonable size um, we had some successes and some you know not so successful parts of, of that venture but it also got to a point where um, we, we sort of asked ourselves whether that was what we wanted to be doing long term whether the ISP sector was really the place where we wanted to be uh, which is when we started looking towards consumer web type stuff <laughs> So the, the biggest problem is that there's, there's a whole um, segment of travellers, a, a whole you know, huge numbers of travellers who, when, when they're looking for travel, they haven't already decided where they want to go to and when they want to go. So all of your, your, your mainstream flight search sites expect you to know from the start exactly what destination you're going to and what dates you want to leave and what dates you want to return. But for people who haven't already made that decision, there's, there's no real way of exploring their options and testing out their, their ideas. So that's the, the problem Adioso is solving. We, we give you a, a natural language search box that allows you to do open-ended searches. So you can search for things like Melbourne to Southeast Asia, or Sydney to overseas under $500, um, San Francisco to uh, anywhere late October. So yeah, it's, it's basically, like I mentioned before, it's to make the, the, the actual finding of, of travel or the, the process of travel work more like the way people think. Like people don't think, wow, I really want to fly into Bangkok Airport on the 12th of September. They think, they think I want to go to Thailand and relax on a beach for like two weeks sometime when I can have holidays, you know, in, in a month's time. So where's the product that lets you actually find the answer to that question? And that's what Adioso uh, aims to do. And what we've realised is that the, the way Adioso works is, is actually a lot more like the way you used to interact with a travel agent. You know, it's, it's a lot more like a sort of conversation you might have had where you ask questions and explore possibilities uh, and, and just go through that iterative process before you then settle on exactly what, what flights you want to take. In the last 12 months, We've had about 400,000 visitors 
uh, we served 550,000 unique searches and we've referred about $37 million Australian uh, in qualified leaders through to airlines all over the world. Basically our core feature set, um, I mean there's a million and one sites that let you do the traditional, you know, pick a origin from a drop down, pick your destination airport from a drop down, choose your departure date, choose your return date, and, and that space is really crowded and um, very, very competitive, but we very much um, focus on the features we uh, mentioned, those broad date searches, those telling you where you can go, um, all of those things that you just simply can't do anywhere else. Um, there are a couple of sites that do similar stuff. Skyscanner does some of that functionality uh, in terms of being able to specify a month, but it tends, and, and some of the others have a little calendar in the corner, but they tend to be additional add-ons rather than the core focus of the product, and they tend not to show you all of the results very well. So the, the biggest thing that Y Combinator says they're looking for, they're looking for two things. They want people who are smart and people who are determined and they consider being determined the slightly more important factor. Um, so I guess the fact that we travelled all the way across the Pacific Ocean for a 10 minute interview kind of conveyed the determination we had, uh, as well as just having been really persistent in trying to build startups uh, from our hometown for, for several years. Um, so, I mean, they, um, they obviously liked the, the idea, they, they saw something different in what we were doing. Uh, that's the other thing, I guess, the, the type of, um, the style of travel we're, we're facilitating is not really popular, not as popular yet in the US. Um, you know, it's been big in Australia and Asia and Europe for a long time. So it kind of had to be outsiders to to have the idea in the first place and, and have the insights to be able to execute well. Um, but just more generally in terms of Australians taking ideas to Silicon Valley or Y Combinator, um, there are plenty of people doing it and growing numbers of people doing it. And I think Paul Graham said himself, he, he really likes Australian startups and encourages them to apply. And there is a, an increasing amount, at least from what I've seen, um, year to year of, of Australian startups, both ending up in, in Y Combinator, but also in, in Silicon Valley in general, which uh, I think is a, a good trend. Melbourne's a pretty good place to, to run a startup. Uh, it's, you know, the scene is small and close-knit. Uh, there aren't many of us, but I think we're all pretty passionate about our startups. We're all very serious about it. You know, the people in it, I guess, are not so much into it for the social life. Um, yeah, everyone who's doing it really wants to succeed and, and keep some goals. And it is growing, like really even in the last 12 to 24 months, um, I'm not entirely sure whether it's just our awareness that's grown, but there really seems to be um, a movement towards more of these either networking events or meetup groups that help support like each other and also just let everyone be aware that there are other startups around and there's people to talk to. Uh, which I think, at least for the first few years when we were running startups, we didn't necessarily feel that, even if it was there in stealth. So um, I think it's becoming a pretty healthy ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, and, and so it should. I mean, you know, the, the biggest startup centres in the world are San Francisco or, or the Silicon Valley area and, and Boston. And you know, we find that Melbourne has a lot of the attributes that make those places really fertile ground for startups. So. You know, we like to think that Melbourne can at least be the best startup hub in Australia, if, if not the region. So, you know, we, we certainly hope more people do it. Think it all happens in Silicon Valley. You thought wrong.